Milton Friedman once wrote that if you want to create a shortage of tomatoes, just pass a law that retailers can't sell tomatoes for more than two cents. Instantly, you'll have a tomato shortage. I might also add that that's true of prescription drugs. Virtually every shortage of drugs that we've seen in the last few years involves price controls that drive out production of the drug. One reason the United States leads in pharmaceutical innovation is because while the U.S. adhered to more, a more market-based pricing and rewarded innovators, Europe adopted stringent price controls in the 1980s and 90s. It's not surprising that we lead the world in innovation and Europe does not. But unfortunately, this committee and this hearing is not here to celebrate American success. Instead, the majority drags us to conduct a show trial to harangue companies challenging the Inflation Reduction Act's price controls in court. They've simply brought forward people who question their partisan legislation. Ten years ago, the five-year survival rate for, for patients diagnosed with advanced lung cancer was 5%. Terrible. Since Merck introduced the cancer drug Keytruda in 2014, the survival rate has grown nearly fourfold, 5% to 20%. We should be celebrating that instead of castigating people and telling them how to run their business and why, don't you, why are you buying your stock back? I have a friend with a genetic predisposition to cancer. He's alive today because of Keytruda. We should be celebrating that. Johnson & Johnson's Remicade was the first monoclonal antibody approved for treating chronic conditions like Crohn's disease and rheumatoid arthritis. Since its approval, Remicade has revolutionized treatments for inflammatory disease, made remission a reality for patients with debilitating conditions, and paved the way for development of other autoimmune treatments. When I began in medicine, virtually all patients with rheumatoid arthritis you could see from a distance had crippling, disfiguring arthritis in their hands. Now today it's rarely seen because of the advances of American companies under an American system that allowed profit to occur. In 1987, Merck pledged to, no to donate the entire stock of its drug ivermectin to those suffering from river blindness. Nearly 37 years later, ivermectin donation program treats 300 million people annually with over 11 billion treatments shipped to endemic countries. This is charity, my friends, from capitalism. You don't get this under socialism because there is no profit under socialism. They have no money to give. They make extraordinary profits. Do they keep some up for their investors? Yeah, that's what they're supposed to do. But they also have some left over for charity and you don't get that under socialism. Because of Merck's donations, seven countries eradicated the transmission of the number one cause of blindness in the world. Pharmaceutical innovation has improved cancer rates, cured hepatitis C, doubled the life uh, span of patients living with cystic fibrosis. It goes on and on. We've tried price controls in general here. We did it in the 1970s under a Republican president, under Nixon. It was a disaster and it led to lines at the gas pump. It was an ultimate disaster. Good afternoon, friends. This is important news. The Internal Revenue Service has just released new information. You may be receiving a smaller refund check this tax season, but some states are still offering rebate checks that could be worth over $500. My dearest friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also, every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, all you need to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Also, at the end of today's video, I will be announcing yesterday's winners. So please make sure that you do stay tuned. Now friends, according to the IRS, federal income tax refunds are averaging $1,395. This tax filing season has started less than two weeks ago. The Internal Revenue Service says that's an almost 29% decrease in the average refund year over year. This is compared with the first batch of data on last year's income taxes. But experts say there are several reasons why that might be. First, the IRS began processing tax returns a little later this year than it did last year. Filing season started on January 29th, compared with last year's January 23rd start, which means the IRS has not processed as many returns as it had at this point last year. 
That skews the comparison of refund sizes. The IRS said in an official statement, Considering the loss of seven days in this comparison, filing season statistics show a strong start to the filing season 2024, with all systems running well. The IRS has received 15.3 million returns so far. That is a 19% decrease compared with the first round of data last year. Early in last year's tax season, the average refund was nearly 11% lower than the year before. But by the end of the season, the average refund was just 2.6 smaller, coming in at $3,167. Despite the slightly later start this year, April 15th is still the deadline to pay any taxes owed. The Internal Revenue Service also cannot distribute refunds out the door until at least February 15th, 2024. Under the Protect Americans from Tax Hikes Act of 2015, refunds in returns claiming the Earned Income Tax Credit or the refundable part of the Child Tax Credit will be withheld until February 15th. The child tax credit pays up to $2,000 per child, and $1,600 of that sum can currently turn into refund cash. A pending bill in the Senate would boost a refundable portion to $1,800 on the tax returns that people are filing this year. So it's important to note that everyone has a different tax situation. There are tax implications connected to changes like a new baby, a new spouse, or a new source of income. Those changes can affect the size of an individual's return. But broadly speaking, tax preparation experts say there are no federal law changes for tax year 2023 that should refund averages lower than they were the year before. Tom Sabin, the Director of Government Relations with the National Association of Tax Professionals, he has said, there's another bit of silver lining. If a person's 2023 income did not keep up with inflation rates, that could potentially trim their tax liability and increase their tax refund. The inflation index parts of the tax code has increased by 7%. Some of the provisions that are getting adjustments include parts of a return, such as a standard deduction, and the income ranges for tax brackets. According to the Chief Tax Information Officer, a tax prep company, Jackson Hewitt, an average refund this year might actually be 5% to 10% higher after the dust settles on all of this year's tax returns. But some Arizona families will receive relief money this month due to a new tax plan included in the state budget. This is called the Arizona Families Tax Rebate Program. Approximately 740,000 taxpayers are estimated to qualify for the rebate payment. So the maximum rebate a taxpayer could receive is up to $750. Dear friends, thank you so much for being part of this community. I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway every Friday. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, do make sure that you click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The winners of yesterday's giveaway is Rosie Kennedy and Dorothy Reese. Congratulations, my dearest friends. To claim your gift cards, please check your notifications page and send me a message. Or my friends, you could message me on my Facebook page. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed weekend.